Hi there and welcome to this Tiger Soft Pastel drawing time lapse. This video will quickly walk you through how I created this portrait, starting with the soft focus monster leaf background, all the way to the realistic tiger portrait itself and the shiny body fur. Make sure to stick around because I'm going to give you some of my favourite must know tips for drawing realistic animal fur using soft pastels and pastel pencils. So this drawing is actually an original concept I put together using multiple reference images. The monster leaf background you see here was taken from a separate photo but once I placed it as the background for the tiger on photoshop I really fell in love with how the composition looked. I also blurred this image so that when the sharp details of the tiger would show, this soft blurry background would create a sense of depth and allow for the dynamic composition that I was after. And as a bonus, this background also beautifully matches the colour of the tiger's eyes, and I find that the green contrasts really well with the rich browns and orange tones within the tiger's fur. So I first used mainly unison pastel sticks just to block in all of those colours. I then blended this out with a mixture of sponges and my fingers, and then began refining with the pastel pencils. This part of the artwork was actually quite a challenge for me as I love drawing in lots of detail so all of the blurriness really took a lot of focus for me to draw. Many shades of greens and yellows were used and blacks of course to incorporate the subtle hints of colours both for the leaves and also the blurry edges. If you look closely at the reference you'll see how there are varying shades of greens towards the edges of the leaves for example. Some of the greens have more of a blue tint where others have more of a yellow tone to them. The great thing about pastel pencils is how easily they blend, so I definitely use this to my advantage. Just lightly going over an area with a very little pressure will allow for varying levels of the colour to deposit. Just simply add more pressure when you want more colour to show, and less pressure where you would only want a subtle hint. If you'd like to watch how I drew this artwork in real time, I have the video now available on my Patreon channel, along with all of the exact pencils used. You can find the link to my Patreon in the description if that's something you're interested in. Here I'm continuing to blend with my sponge and fingers and also use the pastel pencils to refine as I go along. I'm keeping a relatively light pressure with everything that I'm doing so that all of the layers are even. Keeping a light pressure throughout will allow you to gradually build up the shapes you can see in the reference photo and not overwhelm an area. There is actually a lot of black in this background, which I like because as I come to draw in the bright tiger fur, the values will contrast well and allow the subject to really stand out against the background. I will use my sponge to blend out most of the darkest areas, but as I come to the soft focus leaves themselves, I opt to blend with my finger instead. This is as fingers will create more of a blurring effect and not carry the black pigment into the colour area as the sponge would. I want to avoid too much black pigment from the sponge depositing onto the dark but vibrant green leaf colours. This will end up making the area look muddy and messy. You'll notice that further back the leaf is darker and this is to make it appear as though it's emerging from the background into the foreground. Again, it's working towards achieving a realistic sense of depth. Having sharp pencils really helps with the shading in process. I can use the side of the tip to precisely and gently deposit the pastel where it needs to go. If you would like to know how I sharpen my pastel pencils, I will leave a link to my free PDF beginner's guide in the description for this video. Throughout I'm really focusing on the pencil colour choice as well. I can opt for light vibrant pencils for that extra injection of colour, but only apply a slight pressure as to not overwhelm these dark areas. With pastel pencils, it's all about figuring out how hard you need to press. Generally, I will use hardly any pressure throughout, and as I mentioned before, I like to gradually build up the layers, as I think this slow and steady approach is vital for a realistic outcome. If realism is what you are also aiming for, I would say that patience and really taking your time are skills and methods that can't be overlooked.
Okay, so now that we have our blurry background in place, the fun and more technical part can start. To begin on the tiger's portrait, I first opt for black soft pastel sticks and pastel pencils to first map out the darkest areas. Doing so will allow me to have the area organised as I can use these black shapes as references to know where the other colours are supposed to go. This will mean that I won't have to look at the reference photo as frequently, just glance over every now and then which is really helpful in the long run. To start the base colour layer, I take varying shades of orange, browns and greys. I'm mainly using Unison Soft Pastel Sticks for this and a little does go a long way. This brand has many rich vibrant colours and each pastel stick lasts a very long time. When applying your pigment with your pastel sticks, it's vital that you don't press too hard as you don't want to fill up the paper with too much pastel. This will make it near impossible to add any pencil details on top. When it comes to blending out this base layer, just like I did with the monster leaves, I would use a mixture of my soft sponge tool and my fingers, making sure to not accidentally transfer any wrong pigments with my sponge and using my fingers to create more of a blurring effect as opposed to completely blending out an area. This base colour layer does more than just put the starting colour down. It's also a time where I figure out the values and rough details of an area. For example, you can see that one side of the face is slightly in shadow, which also makes the other side look a little brighter in comparison. I will replicate this with my colour choice and further refine when I come to add in the pencil details. Once I'm happy with how the base layer is looking, I can then collect my pastel pencils together and start drawing in the fur texture. There is no right or wrong place to start, but I typically start in the top left and work my way to the right or down to the bottom. Again, especially because this drawing is relatively small, I like to make sure that my pencils are as sharp as possible. This will ensure that I am able to create the fine lines needed for all of the detail. Different brands of pastel pencils will produce different opacities, some such as the Faber Castell produce much more subtle and fine lines, whereas the Caran d'Ache and Conte Paris produce much more opaque and generally thicker lines. If you picked up my free PDF guide, it goes into detail about the differences between the pencil brands. Hopefully you can see how the organised base colour layer relates to the pastel pencils. The colour choice is important. The base layer generally needs to be slightly darker so that the brighter pencil details can show on top. This is how a sense of depth is created in drawings. The brighter pencil marks contrasting against the darker background makes it appear as though those lines that make up the fur texture are coming from the background and into the foreground. So now with a black pencil, I'm doing the opposite. I'm drawing in black lines in the same direction of the fur and this is just to darken the area further. These will serve as dark gaps between the lighter fur texture marks. This area of the face is in shadow so even the highlight pencils have to be darker than most of the other highlights that I've already used. The general value of the colours here are much darker in comparison to the other lighter side of the face. Before I carry on with this video, I just want to quickly mention my Patreon channel. On Patreon, you will find many of my high quality art tutorials and real time videos that go in depth on how I achieve lots of detail and realism in my artworks. I know how frustrating learning to draw and paint can be, which is why I created my Patreon channel. All of the lessons are beginner friendly with the aim for you to learn as fast as possible to create realistic art that you're proud of. My Patreon channel is where I take you through my full creative process as well as explaining all of the techniques, thoughts and any tips that I may have. Each tutorial contains a full list of the specific materials and tools needed so you're not left guessing what you need to get started. There are three subscription tiers to choose from that will instantly unlock access to hundreds of hours of high quality drawing and painting videos right now. If that's something you think you may be interested in, you can always find the link to my Patreon in the description, but for now, let's get back to the video. Carrying on in this shadowed area, I'm opting for a light yellow pencil, but to keep the pencil marks darker, I'm using an even lighter pressure. This will allow for only a slight amount of pigment to mix with the base layer and keep the value dark while allowing for the specific colour that I'm after. In the lighter area, I can simply add more pressure, which will leave more opaque and brighter marks for the same colour. I think that this is the beauty of pastels. The addition of a varying pressure for varying levels of colour, value and intensity really allows for another dimension of control when creating artworks. You will notice that I typically create these highlight hairs in multiple layers. I may start with a colour such as a pale yellow and then move to a lighter pink in another layer and then perhaps finish off with a white where the highlights are the brightest. 
With an excellent quality paper such as pastel mat, you will be able to work in and add many layers on top of one another. Using multiple colours like this and working in gradual layers really allows for a realistic sense of depth that I love. The addition of many different tones and colours will always elevate your drawing to look much more interesting in my opinion. So here I'm starting to work more on the white fur and I often opt for cool grey tones. This is because the blue tint looks really nice with white fur as opposed to warm greys. I'm first mapping out all of the hairs, what length they are and in what direction with subtle highlights and then I'll go back over these areas with lighter pencils and pull out even more of those highlights that I can see in the reference photo. For the nose I'm only using pastel pencils simply for the extra control that they give in smaller areas. Multiple layers of colours are used to build up the specific values and tones that I can see. Electric blue is used in the subtle highlights in these darker areas which I think looks really interesting. To begin work on the eyes, I typically tidy up an area before moving on to the colours. As mentioned, this tiger has wonderful green eyes that pair very well with the background. The addition of the light blue reflection highlights really allow the eyes to look 3D and pop off the paper. Next, I'll spend a bit of time going in with varying shades of grey to build up the white fur areas before moving on to the all important whiskers. For the whiskers, I like to take an opaque white such as the Caran d'Ache Chinese White or the Conte Paris White and then sharpen them to a flat point and draw in the line with a bit of pressure, remembering to flick out at the end. So once the portrait had its whiskers in place, I could then switch my focus to drawing in the tiger's body. On my Patreon channel, the portrait itself is a full 2 hour tutorial where I go in depth for the whole process with voiceover instruction. Animal fur has become one of my favourite textures to draw. It used to be an area I really struggled with and I found it quite frustrating. Over the years I have engaged in a lot of trial and error to find the methods and techniques that work well for me which I would love to share with you in more detail. The body section you're about to see was recorded from start to finish too and is a 5.5 hour real time video over on my Patreon where you will see exactly how I tackle realistic fur drawings. So if you're interested in what lessons are actually available before subscribing on Patreon, I have a dedicated page on my website with each one showing which also lets you know how long they are. You can find the link to that page in the description for this video. Just like with the portrait, I use my unison colour sticks to first put down a base layer of colour and then blend this out. Again, it's important not to put down too much pastel otherwise you will clog up the paper, making it hard for any pencil details to go on top. A little always goes a long way with soft pastel sticks. I also refined this base colour layer with my pencils just to add in some transitional shades between the darker blacks and the fur colours. I will then go over this layer with both darker and highlight pencils and just gradually build up the lovely tiger fur texture. For a realistic outcome, the transition between black and colour areas is really important. Without transitions, the whole area would look very flat. The fur texture lines also need to overlap onto the darker sections and also dark lines will need to be drawn into the colour sections. This is just replicating how the fur would be in real life. It will be slightly random and unpredictable. Brighter hairs are going to overlap onto darker areas and the dark lines represent the dark gaps where the edges of the fur have little breaks in them. I also make sure that each pencil stroke is slightly random. For example, subtle but varying degrees of length and direction will add more randomness and therefore make it appear more realistic. Often I see students drawing the same lines over and over, both in length and direction. This will end up looking fake and unnatural. It's really important to go for a slightly more random approach but of course this is a skill that you will build over time. This section here is in shadow so all of the values need to darken, even the highlights. 
In another section, I might use a white as the brightest highlight, but here I would just use a grey to keep everything looking in shadow. If I was to just use a white pencil here, it would look wrong and out of place. If you're ever confused about what colours you need to be using, consider using a colour picker tool. I personally use the app Affinity Photo on my iPad and often take colour swatches of various areas as I work. To build up the fur at the middle of the body here, you can see that I'm using a dark brown pencil to act as a soft transition between the colour and the black fur sections, and then I'm going over with a pale yellow to add in some lines. I'll then go over these yellow lines with some light pinks to make the fur appear even brighter and shinier where I can see the light hitting the most in the reference photo. As I'm working in these pencil details, I'm always thinking about what directions these hairs are flowing in, the lengths of these hairs, how many gaps as this will convey the fur density, and how these hairs overlap into different sections which conveys a realistic sense of depth. I will stop talking for a little bit so that you can watch the process in peace as all of the methods and techniques that I have previously mentioned about remain the same. If you have any questions so far, please feel free to leave a comment and I will do my best to get back to you as soon as possible. And finally, here is the finished outcome. This was such a fun artwork for me to work on, I really loved the challenge of putting this composition together and seeing it become a reality. I'm really looking forward to creating more animal portraits with blurry backgrounds. If you have any suggestions of what you'd like to see me paint or draw next, leave a comment on this video. As always, thank you so much for taking the time to watch my video, I really do hope you have enjoyed it and are able to take away some useful tips. Check the description for any important links and further reading. Also, feel free to like this video as that really helps me out a lot and also subscribe if you would like to see more from me. Before you go, why not download my free Pastel Beginners PDF guide? Inside, I have included everything you need to know before you get started with pastels. Thanks again for watching and I hope to see you in the next one.